without uh, an open casket because his remains were cremated and it was just a memorial service and the ashes were taken by his wife out of state, out of state. I would assume that she's probably here in South Florida since this is where the family was. So that's, uh, that's all that I know about Jordan that happened uh, last June. He's now been dead or ostensibly dead uh, for a full year. I know that his wife has filed um, through, uh, because of, for a death um, benefit through Social Security for the children. And um, I would, I, I'm still not fully sure whether or not he is. I don't know whether he's, he is dead, whether this is wishful thinking, whether he's gone into deep cover, uh, whether he's taken another identity. I would never uh, approach his family or anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, they're totally innocent and out of the loop on this. The uh, information that I have from Jordan is that he and I were both part of a um, of a program to harvest my uh, my genetic material, or my my eggs, and somehow his mother got him. His mother was also supposedly uh, not able to have children, and he was a miracle child. Um, so basically, uh, that's where I'm at now. I, I have found out more things about my involvement uh, at an early level with this COINTEL program. Uh, Okay, uh, anybody have questions? If you're going to uh, explain yourself a little bit more about the interdimensional beings, and uh, if you're still here to learn, and if you're going to tell me anything about those things, or if you're going to work for them, how do you think it's going to be? Mia, are you still there? Yeah, I can't hear you too well, though, uh, so. Mia, uh, excuse me, my name is Ken Cherry. Uh, say I found uh, you know your discussion fascinating, but I was wondering if you could go uh, into maybe a little detail about the interdimensional beings. Do they still appear to you? Uh, are they, you know, giving you any information that uh, <laughs> might be important to the rest of us? Okay. Um, the interdimensional beings uh, from Exalta, and I, I deal with one especially called Zarg. Um, I found our. Our time together when we spent, and, and with the exchange of information from Zarg uh, to me, incredibly powerful. Um, their focus, basically, was on explaining how uh, our connection is, how, um, and what the plans are for the future related to the exiles. And um, in terms of the future, which I think is probably, is that your is that your focus? What is it specifically that you wanted to know uh, about it? Because that's a pretty broad question. Do you want to know what it, where, what the, the interdimensional, interdimensional level is that they're at? Uh, well, any yeah, the, what dimensional level they're at, or uh, what what is supposedly the purpose of the exiles here? Okay. If you can reveal that. Right. Well, first of all, um, Excelta. And, you know, and, and I had to kind of revise a lot of my own ideas about the way things are um, because of, we have been told about, you know, that there's a third dimension, we're moving into the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, you know, and that we have a limited amount of dimensional activity here. But uh, so I, I'm only going to tell you what they said to me. Now, whether or not this is true or not, it's up to you to decide. But um, they said that Excelta is an interdimensional place, and it is also a level of consciousness that it exists at a realm well beyond the existence of the physical Earth, and that it 
and, and the earth and its consciousness. So it exists beyond our consciousness and, and uh, the earth, the physical earth. And in, they said, in the attainment of consciousness, of our levels of consciousness, there are 22 levels of dimension. Okay? So they're talking about 22 levels of dimension. And that they, these levels are divided into three parts. So you have 22 levels divided into three parts. The first are seven levels, then there's the next seven, and then eight. And that each of these plateaus, um, each have plateaus within each dimension. And that Excelta is at the level um, that's the 22nd level. And so it's at the top of the last eight. So Earth, then, is in the, uh, where, the way Earth is now at this consciousness. It's within the first third of the eight. So it's uh, somewhere within the first seven that we're moving into um, a higher realm within Earth. That's why there's a lot of these changes, consciousness changes that are going on, and um, that the, at, at the Excelta level, basically what they do is that they are universal watchdogs, that they see and they listen for the advancement of all the uh, planets in the cosmos and that they travel um, to evaluate the evolution, but they never interfere in the processes of each planet. That what they do is galactic levels go to, and that it's not the end of, ev of, the, of an evolutionary phase. It's just kind of a plateau, and it has a purpose and a function. And um, the reason why I'm here and others that are exiles that were placed here at least 26,000 or years ago was because of a problem that had existed at that time in Excelta. Now, someone who I have since met who happened to have been a friend of mine, and that's what makes this thing, whole thing so fascinating to me, is that they're not telling me that I'm a top honcho. They're telling me that someone that I knew, and they named him, um, uh, that he is he was kind of like um, like a, a, a there's a hierarchy a spiritual hierarchy and he was kind of like the pope of that hierarchy only uh, it it wasn't a monarchical type of situation it was more of a spiritual a spiritual monarchy and that even at that realm that there was uh, problems with individuals and there there was divisiveness and um, they had to remove him his name is troy he, i know him here as troy uh, uh, they had to remove him with what they call his household those that were um, important to him that were his attendants that were maybe spiritual uh, beings around him or people that were a part of this this, this spiritual monarchy uh and maybe just familial. I, I don't know exactly how they are. They call them in his household, of which I was one. Uh, we had to be placed here until things kind of cooled down. And they purposefully placed us here and other exiles because Earth would be the last place that they would look. <laughs> so they would look for this guy. And uh, that, you know, and, I, and I, I was amazed. I said, you mean even at that high realm that there's still this kind of divisiveness, that there is still this kind of ego uh, uh, budding that goes on. And they said, yeah. But, so, but now that um, Excelta has moved to a higher, uh, a higher realm, as will Earth at our next millennium, and uh, they said that when Troy, who they call him King uh, Dugud, Dugud, that when he went to Earth, that Excelta was at uh, a lower level than it was... Uh, um, spiritually, that it wasn't as evolved because it's always evolving, and that they have been preparing the way for the exiles and the return of Troy as a soul, and uh, that they can't completely move on and evolve until they have the return of the exiles, and until that transpires, they want me, wanted me, that was my job, they wanted me to help prepare the exiles by writing this book and by giving the information and they said that, that those there are many that will read the information that will resonate to it just
because they know at a gut spiritual level that this is something that they relate to and who they are. Yeah. And there will be those that are exiles that won't be ready because they have been put back here. Their soul um, relates to the earth consciousness and uh, they won't accept it. But it's not like it's a cult that you have to join that's it. You know, you do this and that, yeah. like, like the ones that went and killed themselves, that when people that are exiles die um, on a normal psychic death, that their souls then will be taken back. I mean, as I said at the beginning of my talk, I, I assume that's the way it is. They won't tell me. They won't tell me. They were much more forthcoming in in the uh, the basic ABCs of this now that now that I, I know a whole lot more and can ask more salient questions. They are really clamming up. They have, in the last two years, they have totally clammed up, giving me substantive stuff. Uh, my book is filled with all kinds of information related to, the, to this and to the exiles, which makes me feel, because a lot uh, of our conversations uh, um, are telepathic, you know, some have been verbal, I've met them in the physical, every way that you could think of that uh, you can communicate with a, a, a non-human and even a human, I've, I've done with these beings, um, and my feeling. On, on a telepathic level, you know, because so much of telepathy also hits you in the gut, um, is that we're on the brink of something, and they won't tell me because, number one, maybe they're afraid I, I might be fearful or that I might over-prepare, or, as they say, the most important thing, the most important thing for any human on this planet is to live fully in the moment. You know, to be here now, not to live out of fear, not to live out of trepidation, but just to, if you're going to prepare yourself, you have to prepare yourself spiritually on, on a normal basis. So um, this, this is why they're not, I, I can't give you anything more in terms of predictions. All I can give you is something at a feeling level that whatever the reason is that they wanted to prepare the exiles for this, a sense of immediacy. And... What, how it will outpicture, I really don't know. All I know yeah. is that now that I did my job, that they ain't talking too much, you know. we got one more question. It's time for about one more, maybe, if you don't mind. Okay. I had a question uh, regarding uh, your comments about, uh, I guess it was, was it Jordan or whatever being your son. Did you ever... I'm, I'm sorry, I can't. Jordan being my what? I can't hear... That would have been possible. I certainly would have thought it would have been feasible. Um, as I said, I wanted a lot more substantive proof. The only thing, there, there are a couple of things that make me um, believe that something went on, whether or not he, he is part of a mind control project like I was, um, is the fact that when I had this experience on the beach in Tampa, um, it was at the same time that this, it was possible that the ovum could have been harvested. It was a very timely date, uh, and I had never mentioned that to him. That wouldn't have been anything he would have known. I never really mentioned it to anyone until I wrote it in my book. So that he and the book came out after you know, he had already uh, left uh, my life. Uh, so, and because of my, my memory of something very fearful happening to me on that beach, and my experiences of being at McDill Air Force Base, which is very close to, um, to where the university was. I've been there many times, um, ostensibly, you know, to, to go to the, the, the uh, EM club, you know, the, the enlisted men's club, and to dances and things like that. Um, and other things that had happened to me around, um, around McDill, plus the fact that one of the things I talk about in my book is how I was called by the head of the uh, Air Force Office of Special Investigation. Uh, I, well, again, while I was just at home doing something on my word processor, this guy who I have validated as being the top honcho for the Eastern um, 
uh, Air Force and the Special Office of Special Investigation of the East Coast, hit my number was put on his cell phone. Um, he said it was a secured line. He was as puzzled as I was. He thought I had called him on his secured line. And, I, you know, I said, what? I said, I thought it was a joke. And he said, no, this isn't a joke. He said, didn't you call me? And I said, well, where are you? And he said that he was in Tampa, so which I then knew was McDill. And this has all been verified. As a matter of fact, I have... Um, uh, contacted the Air Force and uh, under the Freedom of Information Act, which is another whole thing I could talk for hours about, and my trying to sub, you know substantiate a lot of this, all the runaround I've been given, um, that there was a lot of correlation during with that date and with McDill and with things that had happened to me, and um, so it's a possibility. Um, I I don't know whether or not Jordan would have submitted himself to that. Uh, had I had more time with him, I might have, you know, I would have definitely have asked him. I wouldn't have minded it myself. Um, so I don't know whether this is a mind control thing, whether this actually happened, whether we were both in the same program. Um, there are a couple of other things. If we had more time, I could tell you about why I think it might be true. But I really don't know. I, all I know is that they went through a whole lot of trouble to make me believe this. Why? I have no idea. Help. How to get it. Okay. Go ahead. You there? Me? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Okay. If um, you, they want to uh, order it through the credit card, um, they call 1-800-444-2524. That's 800-444-2524. Or, um, and it's $16.95 plus $3.95 shipping and handling for the credit card. And if they want to um, to send me a check, it would be sixteen ninety five plus two dollars for postage and handling, which would be eighteen ninety five. To Excel to Publishing, PO Box four five three zero, Fort Lauderdale three 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 eight. That's four threes and an eight. Or else they could just order it from their bookstore, Mia Adams, The Exiles. Okay, let's move it